Hey everybody, <clears throat> it's Pastor Brent. It's Friday, March 20th, outside here this afternoon and uh, just enjoying a little social distancing, which I know is very important to all of us right now. And I certainly uh, pray that you're doing your part <clears throat> to do that, along with taking other precautions to help in this most serious time. But I just want to take a few minutes this afternoon and I just wanted to uh, speak to you as I have each day and I appreciate so much those of you who've watched and your words of encouragement and your texts and things like that have been greatly a help to me because I want to be a help to you and I really believe if we come together and help each other God can do some great things through this and I just want to share a few thoughts with you from God's word today <clears throat> that I hope will continue to encourage you because I believe God's word is where we get our real hope our peace and our strength from also, along with that, I want to keep you informed of um, how things are going, the things we're doing at our church at Heflin Baptist, and as I watch other videos of many other wonderful pastors, why well, tell you, I just want to say thank God for these pastors, what they're doing, and reaching out not only to their people, but to the world as we're doing here, and uh, just share some words with you because uh, we need help to remain faithful to God. Uh, we need to be helped to be, remain faithful to one another and remain faithful to his holy word. I've never been one that's used social media a whole lot. Um, uh, there's probably a lot of reasons why, but um, circumstances have kind of driven us to have to think outside the box, have to get out of our comfort zones and begin to explore other opportunities to stay connected with our fellow believers and also to encourage one another. I always uh, believe <clears throat> that for social media, uh, there's kind of a criteria that every person, especially those who are followers of Jesus Christ, should use, and that is that we use social media, whichever avenue it is, that we would do so to share some important information, not just hearsay or rumors, but important information that may be helpful, but also that we would use it for the purpose of encouragement and inspiration information encouragement inspiration so i really believe that's kind of the criteria for me that's what god has led me to do and i hope that you will use it in those ways also because as you encourage others it helps them in this time and it helps inspire them to remain faithful in these difficult days i would ask you to please not use this wonderful tool of social media that i and many other uh, pastors and leaders are going to be using over the following weeks to be able to stay connected through videos and worship times with the people of god please don't use it to be negative don't use it to downgrade others and don't use it as an opportunity to take shots at people that wouldn't be faithful and it certainly wouldn't be helpful but we do have an opportunity to kind of lock arms virtually right now, a virtual locking of arms that we might um, do so with those around us. And we would lift each other up, not put each other down. Uh, so, and I know many of you, boy, y'all have blessed me how you're using it for that. And I want to encourage you to continue to do so that your faithfulness and your positivity would be something that would inspire others to find the positiveness even in this difficult time. I want to encourage you to continue to pray for our leaders in our nation, those at the local level, <clears throat> those at the state level, and also those at the national level. I, I hope you will do that because each of them have a tremendous burden of responsibility on them right now, especially at the national level. Uh, I hope you'll really lift our president, our vice president, the coronavirus task force, and people that are involved in this fight, I mean, let's lift them up. We've got, you know, one goal here, and that's to get this virus gone so we can get back about our business and continue to be do what we do. So remember that. Pray for them. And don't forget, as far as coming up this weekend, I hope you won't forget that 10 a.m. on Sunday we will be live on F FB Live. Uh, Heflin Baptist Church at 10 a.m. We're going to be sharing the Word of God and singing some songs that I hope will encourage you. If you pray for my daughter Kate as she prepares to do that, I appreciate it very much. And as I prepare to speak from God's Word, I appreciate I, your prayers more than you will ever know. I would encourage you to gather with your family if you can. Gather at home, worship together, 
uh, and then maybe even after the service is over, dads and moms, talk with your children, talk with those gathered around about, you know, what have we heard today? What's some takeaways we get? If you don't have Facebook Live or know somebody that doesn't and can't, can't get on there, it will be uploaded to YouTube that afternoon, so the recorded version will also be available, and it will continue to be available on Facebook. Let me share something with you from God's Word for just a minute from 1 Samuel chapter 14. It's a passage that's become very near and dear to my heart, and to some of the guys in our church, we refer to this quite regularly because we've seen God do some amazing things we have no reason to believe that he won't continue to do that. This comes out of a situation that took place in the life of Jonathan, Saul's son. And let me share with you what uh, took place with him in 1 Samuel uh, chapter 14. He noticed some things going on, and listen to what the Word of God says. It says, Now it happened one day that Jonathan, the son of Saul, said to the young man who bore his armor, Come. Let us go over to the Philistines' garrison that is on the other side. But he did not tell his father. And Saul was sitting in the outskirts of Gibeah under the pomegranate tree, which is in Migron. The people who were with him were about 600 men. Ahijah, the son of Ahidab, Ichabod's brother, and the son of Phinehas, the son of Eli, the Lord's priest in Shiloh, was wearing an ephod. But the people did not know that Jonathan had gone. Between the passes by which Jonathan sought to go over to the Philistines' garrison, there stood a sharp rock, one on one side, and a sharp rock on the other side. And the name of one was Bozes, and the name of the other was Sina. The front of one faced northward opposite of Michmash, and the other southward opposite of Gibeah. Then Jonathan, notice verses 6 and 7 with me. Then Jonathan said to the young man who bore his armor, Come, let us go over to the garrison of the uncircumcised. It may be that the Lord will work for us, for nothing restrains the Lord from saving by many or by few. So his armor bearer said to him, Do all that is in your heart. Go then. Here I am with you according to your heart. Well, I love the story of David and Jonathan. What an awesome story it is about how they had such a close relationship that the Bible says that their hearts were literally knit together. Boy, I tell you, what an amazing story it is, not just because of the closeness of the relationship, but because there's a lot of contention because Saul didn't like David, but Jonathan loved him as his own soul, and he took care of him, and he protected him even when he didn't have to. But in this situation, he saw an opportunity to do something that would make a difference. And by doing so, he said, maybe the Lord's going to do this for us. Just maybe God is going to work on our behalf. And I want to share a couple of things we that Jonathan demonstrated that I believe are very important. The first thing he demonstrated is he demonstrated courage because he said to the garrison, he said to the armor bearer before they went over to see the garrison, he said, let us go over that showed he had courage because he was willing to put himself at risk in order to make a difference for the people of God. But then he demonstrated conviction. Not only did he say, let us go over, but in verse 6, he also said, it may be that the Lord will work for us. He had great conviction that God was going to show up, and he had great confidence that God was going to show up, and he was going to live as though God was going before him. And then he demonstrates great commitment when, he's, when, we, when the garrison said, do all that's in your heart. I don't know about you, but God's put a lot of things in my heart for 2020, and I never expected that we would encounter some of the obstacles that we're encountering. But I know that this is for good. Just as much as Joseph's brothers who sold him into slavery, they meant it for evil. Joseph said, but God meant it for good. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe today that we must demonstrate these same qualities that Jonathan did. When Jonathan demonstrated courageousness, when he had conviction, when he had confidence, when he had commitment, we must do the same. Well, there's been a great deal of emphasis by many Christian leaders on the fact that the church is not a building but a body. <laughs> and I want to say to you again, as I said earlier, I'm so grateful for these brothers who have just 
opened their hearts and stepped out of their comfort zones and have gotten on Facebook daily or Instagram or Twitter or whatever, took pictures and took videos and just spoke in the lives of others. I'm so grateful for that because we do need to be reminded. Well, let me remind you of a couple of things from my hero, Dr. Adrian Rogers, and I'm going to close this video and, and I'm going to pray for God to touch your life and use you for his glory. Adrian Rogers says there's no promise God can't keep. No prayer God will not answer, and no problem too hard for him to solve. <laughs> he also said this to the church, You ought to live like Jesus died yesterday, rose this morning, and is coming back this afternoon. <laughs> well, I believe we'll live like that. We can make a difference regardless of what's going on around us. Friends, I want you to remember a couple things. The one thing I want you to remember to do is stay faithful, stay focused. Stay, keep the Word of God right in front of you. And let the Word of God and the Spirit of God guide you in these days. And never forget, church, that I love you. And there ain't a thing you can do about it. God bless you. Have a great evening. I'll try to do a little quick one tomorrow to get us ready for Sunday. And God, I just pray that God is using you to touch people around you by being courageous, uh, by having conviction, by having confidence and doing the things that God is calling you to do. I love you. Take care. Have a great evening.